Hi, everyone. Welcome to NAB. It's great to see everyone back out on the show floor. My name is Jorge Alberto Fiterre. I'm Condista Partner and Condista Labs Principal. I'd like to say that at the intersection of technology and media, I found a career and have lived through its evolution. I have backgrounds in engineering, mass communication, and business. The combination of these three distinct disciplines have given me a unique and holistic perspective on the transformation of our industry. For 23 years, Condista has been one of the leading distributors in the Spanish language television and international programming spaces, reaching pay TV audiences throughout the Americas. From one client and one channel to 30 networks across 16 companies and thousands of hours of high quality content that Condista Labs distributes today. In about three decades, the distribution model has gone full circle. What was once traditional linear television has evolved into many flavors of video on demand, streaming applications, and now we're back to live linear channels. In the process, the landscape has become more complex, more sophisticated, extremely competitive, and hyper fragmented. This has been a paradigm shift decades in the making. What is driving this evolution? How are new business models and technologies going to shape our industry going forward? And how can programmers leverage these to provide a dynamic, personalized entertainment experience? Where do independents fit in? And how do they stand out amidst competition and consolidation? This evolution has impacts all along the value chain from content owners to consumers. For those of you that may not be familiar with the content market, I'll start by introducing the established distribution models and highlighting the shortcomings of each. Then I'll outline the catalysts that got us to where we are and how streaming has evolved since. And lastly, the opportunities that we see for independence in this, in this new landscape. Let's start to unpack this and make sense of it. First, we have the linear distribution model, the original lean back experience. In the modern world of multi-screen, at the time, this was the only screen. Families would gather around the television nightly to watch their favorite programs. Appointment viewing and least objectionable programming were common themes, and you'd tune in at a specific time, or just zap or surf until you found something, anything to watch. Although considered to be antiquated in this age of, every, of everything on demand, linear television still has staying power. Examples of key players in this model are the large three-letter broadcast networks we all know, ABC, CBS, and NBC. Since we've mentioned Spanish language, we'll add Telemundo and Univision. On the pay TV side, you also have large incumbent networks, TNT, TBS, CNN, ESPN, and HBO, among others. These linear networks dominated American television until the 1990s, and most still do today. As technologies evolved, video on demand became possible. At the time, this really set the stage for the next evolution of content consumption, binge watching. Watch what you want, when you want, and as much as you want. On-demand offerings come typically in two forms, transaction or subscription. Transaction VOD, or TVOD, is where a viewer can rent or buy content on a per title basis, and it's usually premium content. Subscription VOD, or SVOD, is where a viewer can pay a monthly fee for unlimited access to a rotating library of content. This gave birth to another way to consume content, and a new type of consumer, the cord cutter. Virtual MVPDs, or VMVPDs, are like traditional operators but are distributed over the top via public internet. They aren't tied to wireline, to wireline networks and don't have the same capacity constraints. Therefore, they can capture more subscribers across wider markets as long as stable internet is available. Key players in these models include VOD-enabled operators like Xfinity and other streamers like Netflix, Amazon Prime, HBO Max, Disney Plus, Sling, Fubo, and many of the other pluses and goes that have become entertainment essentials for all our families. When the SVOD market started to get crowded, saturation and fatigue started to set in. With more platforms came more subscriptions, and now the skinny bundle started to look a lot like cable. Ad-supported VOD, or AVOD, offers free access to content, but as the name suggests, is ad-supported, personalized, and addressable. Free ad-supported streaming TV, or FAST, marks the return of linear television. 
Like traditional linear, it's a true lean back experience, but with the advantages of personalization and addressability. Lastly, hybrid models exist combining one or more of these acronyms. Key players in these models include YouTube, Hulu, Peacock, the Roku channel, VIX, and Plex, amongst others. So now that we've defined all these models, let's see where their shortcomings are. Traditional linear wasn't personalized. It couldn't account for differences, for differences in region, interests, or demographic attributes. It also wasn't portable, at least in a practical sense. There was no second screen. This was the only screen. And you couldn't take it with you. TVOD and SVOD are limited to the content available in each library. They may satisfy, satisfy some programming needs, but your favorite show may be on another platform, which may require another subscription. They both also lack the traditional lean back experience. It's an active process that requires effort from the viewer to figure out what exactly you're gonna watch. AVOD and FAST models both carry ad loads, which depending on the viewer may be tolerable, overly intrusive, or just come in at the wrong time. And it's also worth noting that all streaming models can suffer from buffering and delays depending on internet stability, which is a problem with live content. And on any streaming platform, the quality is just sometimes not there. Applications can also have poor user interface and user experiences, or they're just slow and clunky. These aspects ultimately lead to a bad customer experience. So how did we get here? During the 2010s, smart TVs were becoming more common in the household, and the streaming platforms were seeing slow but steady growth. With more alternatives outside the traditional paid TV package, the market continues fragmenting and cord cutting accelerates. Carriage disputes between programmers and distributors see an uptick, and media companies start pulling their content into their own walled gardens. COVID then descends on us, resulting in, a lock in lockdowns worldwide. And like we saw in 2008, society turns to entertainment in difficult times, and this time was no different. This was the catalyst for streaming adoption. This gradual shift that was occurring at a slow but steady pace had finally flipped. We hit the inflection point in a span of two years. Now we come to 2022, and with the streaming market completely saturated, consolidation is all but inevitable. The beginning of the streaming war saw a rush of early entrants like Netflix in a land grab for market share. This led to more platforms, some of which are still operating, and others that either shut down or were acquired. Simultaneously, smaller MVPDs started to phase out their video products in favor of a broadband-only strategy. Some partnered with streaming platforms for bundled offerings and others just let the consumer bring their own subscriptions. Premium content was pulled from pay TV platforms and media companies began to produce their streaming originals. The content offerings, offerings did improve. With more viewer data to analyze came better targeting and personalization. In fact, advertisers are leaning into this moment. Fast is a perfect example of this. However, this inevitably, and as I previously mentioned, led to saturation and now consolidation. So is streaming now at a tipping point? Does the typical consumer really want a pure a la carte play? I think in our experiences over the last decade, the answer is no. Subscription fatigue is another perfect example of this. We're seeing the rebundling and it's starting to look like cable again. We've gone full circle, so now what? Condista, as an independent distributor, has been navigating these changes and consulting our clients on how to evolve with the market while not cannibalizing and, better yet, actually supporting their core product. And this is the playbook. Build on your core product. Leverage your deep content libraries to create streaming solutions, be they AVOD, FAST, or even branded SVOD offerings. Use these products to convert consumers to paid premium. Many of our clients are doing ex exactly this and using their libraries or acquiring new content to build on-ramps to, to premium offerings with success. Being independent has its advantages. This, can, this means that we can be a little bit more agile than mega conglomerates in trying new digital initiatives, iterating faster based on consumer feedback or outright pivoting to new ideas. We think ultimately the industry has gone full circle both in how we consume content and how content is offered but it's a whole new landscape with a multitude of entertainment options and substitutes. That said, it's given us new challenges to tackle and the opportunity to bring new products to market to, contribute dis to continue distributing quality content to audiences. It has and will continue to be an exciting time for the industry. And if you have any quality content that you'd like, to help, that you'd like help distributing, please do get in contact. We'd love to have a conversation with you. Thank you.